This is year eight. Can't believe it. That's I know. crazy. Does, does that sunk in for you? That Not you've really. Been you know, it's, it's been a whirlwind, and and uh, somebody mentioned that to me the other day that it was uh, eight years, and could hardly believe it. What's different with you from year one to year eight? Have you seen that you've evolved? What's not different? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's been a learning process, still learning. I guess that never stops. But, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, the, the excitement of moving into the Pac-12 was uh, a big change, and a big uh, departure from, from the years prior. But, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, it's just a matter of getting in a routine and, and uh, feeling comfortable with what you're doing. You made a, a lot of buzz by hiring Brian Johnson in the offseason. And uh, we talked about it a little bit before, but uh, I'm sure you've heard the doubters and all the people. Oh, sure. What's your response to that? And what is it about Brian? At his age, we all know how talented he was and how, how talented he is, but uh, at his age to be able to take on this kind of responsibility for the first time. Well, first of all, I think no matter who you hire, there's going to be doubters. You can't please everybody. And nor, you know, I don't worry about pleasing everybody. I've got to do what's best for the program. but. But uh, Brian, you know, in my opinion, was the best fit for the position. We did an extensive search. We took uh, over a month to uh, take a look at all the candidates. And when it came right down to it, the, the two best candidates were on our staff, and Brian and Aaron Roderick. And, uh, you know, what we need at this time and what direction we want to go with the offense and, and uh, the leadership uh, factor and all that being uh, taken into consideration, just felt Brian was the guy for the job. Um, you know, after spring ball, I feel even more certain, you know, the way he handled the offense in spring, the progress the, the offense made during spring, the way he relates with the players, the organizational skills that he has. And so, uh, you know, age is just a number, and, and Brian's always been ahead of the curve his entire life. And so, uh, you know, I feel more confident now than, than when we made the hire. Jordan wins back, hopefully healthy. That's always a question mark with him. Are you confident that if he does stay healthy, that he can have the year you guys have been waiting for him to have? Well, we hope so. You know, he's uh, 210 pounds now, which is about 15 pounds heavier than he's, uh, he's ever been with us uh, in his time with us. And uh, that's about maxed out for him probably. You know, his frame is not all that big. So physically, he's, he's gotten to the point where he needs to get. Uh, the mental aspect of his game has always been a strong suit for him. His decision making, his command of the offense, uh, ability to lead defenses, all those things have, uh, have always been uh, a strong suit. So. Uh, you know, we got to keep him healthy. We got to protect him. But uh, you know, he was off to a good start last year before he went down, and, and we're hoping that uh, you know we have a big year from Jordan this year. He has the tools to work with. You have—is this the best receiver tight end core you've had? Yeah, uh, you know, it's very good. Yeah, tight end, I, th I think we can say with confidence that it's the deepest and most talented, at least in my time at Utah. Uh, you got Jake Murphy and David Rolf and, and Kendrick Moyai and. Uh, Wesley Tonga, uh, Dallin Rogers, I mean, the, the, the list goes on and on. And so between those guys and then the depth we have at receiver headlined by Devontae Christopher, uh, it's not, you know, we can't, and we can't be one dimensional like we were last year. You know, John White to rush for over 1,500 yards when everybody in the stadium knew that he was going to get the ball was a, a great accomplishment. And so hopefully this year we can take some of the pressure off of John and we've got to be more productive. If we want to win the South Conference, uh, the South Division of the Pac-12 Conference, we have got to be more productive on offense. Does John White get the respect and the publicity he deserves for what he accomplished last year? You know, I still think he's a little bit under the radar in that in that uh, respect and maybe not getting the complete, um, uh, you know, the accolades and the, and the recognition that he may deserve, but but he doesn't care about that. You know, he's a, he's a blue-collar guy. He's got a great attitude. He's a team guy all the way. But uh, what he accomplished last year was, was outstanding. Did you throw a party when Starlow Tulele announced he was going to stay? Yeah, we, uh, that was uh, <laughs> probably the biggest recruiting coup of the season is when Star decided to come back. And, and uh, we're obviously elated that he did. He took a lot of time with his family and thought long and hard about it. It was not a, a rash decision. He, he weighed all the factors. He'll be getting his degree in December, which is big for Star. Uh, and uh, like I said, we're just excited that we got him in the lineup for one more year. Great story, and he's working to furnish his for four years, quits football, and now he's got an NFL I know, future. It's I know, what, it's a, it's a, it's a great story, and and uh, I'm uh, more than certain it's going to have a great ending. Linebacker seems to be the biggest question on defense. Not that the talent isn't there, mm -hmm. but who's going to step up and who's going to get the job done? Good question. We got Trevor Riley, who's the one guy coming back that uh, is very experienced and played a lot of football for us. Other than that, it's seven or eight uh, freshmen and sophomores predominantly. 
that uh, are in the mix. And the one thing I can say is even though there was really no separation in the spring, we're not losing any sleep over that position because we feel like it is very talented and that the separation will occur naturally as these guys continue to accrue reps in fall camp. Talking to coaches around the league today, no one's going to sleep on your defense. You guys have so much respect around the conference. How proud of you of the respect that you've been able to garner after just one year in this league? Well, that's good to hear, and I think we got off on a good start, or off to a good start last year. Uh, I think we led the conference in total defense. Uh, all the categories combined, you know, if you look at all the all the categories uh, in total, I think that we uh, came out on top. And you know, it's all about great players. You know, you got Star Lothal Lale, who's the best defensive lineman, in my opinion, in the country, the best interior defensive lineman, and was the best defensive lineman in the Pac-12 last year. That's a great starting point. Uh, we've got corners that can play man coverage. We've got safeties that can tackle, and we got we got all the elements that we look for in the uh, in defensive personnel. And we put all that together with the scheme that Coach Sataki brings to the table, and the assistant coaches, the technique, and the fundamentals that they teach. It, it uh, translates into a pretty uh, formidable defense. I know there's only one game on your radar. I know I know better to, You're right. to assume anything You're else. Right. North I, have to, I have to <laughs> ask you though about this USC game that's going to get a lot of national attention on Thursday night. A lot of people are, are excited about it. It's going to be a great opportunity for your program to showcase what you can do at Rice Cycle Stadium. Is this one of the biggest, I mean, as far as games and hype and all that kind of stuff, it's the biggest you've seen since you've been You know, time will tell. They very well could be rated uh, number one in the country when we play them. Who knows? But, but uh, you know, we pride ourselves on, on taking things one, one game at a time and not looking ahead. But, you know, before the season starts, you obviously look at the, se the uh, schedule uh, as a whole and, and uh, you know, look at your, you know, the, the, the home contest, the away contest, and, and the, the timing. Some games are Thursday night, some games are Friday night. So, so we've looked at the whole thing in, in, uh, in, com in its complete form, but uh, you know it's very obvious and very apparent to everyone that that would be a big game for us. Finally, you've had some special years here at Utah. You look at all the talent you have coming back, and obviously it's all got to come together, but do you see the potential for this group to do something special this season? It could. We'll see how, like you said, the, it's got to come together. you got to get some luck along the way, stay healthy. Uh, you got to have great team chemistry, great leadership. So there's a lot of factors that got to go into it from just a but from just a raw talent standpoint and returning personnel, uh, we got a chance to be pretty good.